Is two billion trees the right goal if we're trying to mitigate emissions? I've yet to meet a Canadian who does not love trees. And so a program <laughs> that increases the number of trees in our country is always going to be a good thing. Is this going to help us achieve our emissions targets? The flat answer is no. The government itself has conceded that it has miscalculated the carbon footprint of this program. It will, in fact, be a net emitter of carbon until 2031 as a result of things like transportation, site preparation, greenhouses and the like. There are other good reasons to plant trees. And in the long term, the planting of trees can be a significant carbon sink, but only if the program is well designed, only if it's designed to achieve those effects and not just be a slogan. So let me ask you then, do you think, given the sort of upfront emissions costs, but then the potential long-term benefits, that this is still a good goal? It's absolutely a good goal, if it's well implemented. The problem with the program is not that the goal is not laudable. It is that the program has not really been designed to achieve its goals. The program has been designed to meet a slogan, two billion trees. It's easily understood, Canadians love it, and the media will print it. It has not really been designed to take account of the fact that you need to have biodiversity in those trees. You need not to cut down those trees after they've been planted. And you need to have those trees in the ground in the long term. None of those things are part of this program. And as a result, it was never designed to achieve an objective other than to generate headlines. I think I agree with Akash that I mean they came up with this program not knowing how difficult it is to plant two billion trees starting from scratch because already the nurseries are already booked. And I think one thing that I've actually been successful is really, really push for a diversity of trees, really move away from these monocultures, both in the cities and if we plant it in a more natural environment. And I think when we start planting different species, sometimes species that don't, we don't even grow, then we have to actually even promote collection of seed, growing them in nurseries. So it's much more complicated than we first thought, I think. So I do have to agree that the two billion trees is a slogan, but I think we should move beyond this and realize that we could use trees as a solution, not only for carbon, but for many other things. And it's a very good objective. And hopefully we'll learn from it and do better and even increase our objectives. Akash, you raised some significant concerns there. What is the most important thing you would like to see the government do right now, adjust in this program to make it thrive, work better? You know, none of us expects the government to be infallible, but we do expect it to be honest. So when a program goes awry, it is reasonable for the government to say it's not achieving its objectives. Therefore, we are going to modify it. We're going to change it. We're going to extend the timelines. That's entirely fair. What is not fair is to rewrite history and to simply claim victory when you've actually suffered a defeat. What I would like the government to do is to be forthright and honest about the fact that it simply has not been able to plant the number of trees that it had intended and that it did not put enough safeguards in place to ensure that those trees have the effect that the Canadians expected. So there are two areas where they, they can make immediate changes. The first is that they can prohibit the people who are planting those trees from cutting them down within five years, because right now that is entirely allowed by this program, which means that, in effect, it's little more than a, a subsidy for the lumber industry. Lumber industries that were going to plant trees anyway so that they can harvest them in a few years are now being subsidized by the government to do precisely what they were going to do already. There should be a requirement not only that the trees have to stay in the ground, but in addition that there be biodiversity amongst the species of trees that have been planted. Thank you both so much for your insights today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Akash Maharaj and Christian Messier. Now, forestry companies are not allowed to use the two billion trees funding to plant forests they are already legally obligated to replace after logging. But Maharaj believes they could harvest from any new forest they plant with two billion trees money. So what does the government have to say to that and the issues we heard about on the ground from the people actually trying to produce and plant these trees? Jonathan Wilkinson is the federal minister of natural resources. Welcome back to the house. Thank you very much. The program doesn't require landowners to keep the trees, though, for decades to come. How do you know that a bunch of these trees aren't simply going to be chopped down? 
Well, we actually set up a panel of experts a couple of years ago to help us with, uh, you know, managing the whole way in which the program would work, including what we mean by permanence. And no, you can't cut them down after a couple of decades. Part of the agreement that you sign when uh, when you take this out, whether you're a private landowner or a province or territory, is that those trees must exist through the period where they are sequestering the most carbon, which is a minimum of 60 years. Because I had understood that, in fact, uh, landowners weren't required to sign contracts like that because you feared that people wouldn't be willing to, to make those kinds of commitments. Well, as I say, uh, we work pretty closely with a group of experts. The, the bulk of the trees, um, you know, are, are done under agreements in principle, and those actually do require permanence that has a definition. I haven't heard about that aspect of uh, requiring that these trees stay in place for decades and decades. Is that, is that something new? So there wasn't a definition around permanence at the beginning of the program. This is one of the things that, that uh, we have evolved over time. Uh, I asked a group of experts to get together and have a conversation about a number of different issues, including the issue of permanence. They came back with a number of recommendations. And certainly in many of the uh, the agreements that we're now putting into place, there is a definition that that requires that the trees are actually planted for a certain period of time. That lack of definition has led to situations like what we just heard from Nature Canada, who say, well, forestry companies can apply and there's no limit on the trees being cut down. So this could wind up being a subsidy for the lumber industry. Are, are you concerned that that's the impression people have been left with about this program? Well, I am concerned if the folks, uh, particularly folks like Nature Canada, who, uh, who I would think would know this, um, don't. Uh, so I think it's important <laughs> that we are very clear about that. And uh, I, I certainly will be having people reach out to uh, Nature Canada to have that conversation. Just to be explicit, all the two billion trees have to stay in place for, I believe you said, 60 years? So as I say, uh, this wasn't in place at the beginning of the program, so I would ha ha hesitate to say all two billion. But certainly, as we move forward, the focus is on ensuring that these are uh, that permanence is is defined, so that it's not that you can plant a tree and five years later you can cut it down.